This is part two of renovating a vintage workshop type steam engine. I left part one with the cylinder upended and some oil on top of the piston and when I went to look at it a few hours later the oil was still there. So the issue with the blowing is definitely not the cylinder, this is a good thing. I need to look in the steam chest and immediately I find a problem. Two of the lugs on the steam chest cover are broken off, the cast iron is fractured, this is not my doing. The metal has been broken for a long time, probably just stuck back in place with some super glue. Anyway, here we go. I will remove the steam valve, and now it's time to lever off the steam chest cover. To initially break the seal on the steam chest, I started off with my little craft knife, then I moved up to a screwdriver, and now I'm using the handle of my adjustable spanner. And as you can see, the steam chest is now removed, and you can also see the damage to it. Once again, and it's very clear, honest, it's not my fault. You can even see some of the gasket compound on the broken part of the metal. I'm going to have to give this some thought because it is a bit of a mess really, but it's possibly fixable. The problem with the steam chest cover is easily rectified. I just make a new one using the existing one as a pattern. At this stage, I really have to ask myself, how far do I go with this? You will see as the rebuild develops. But for now, I'll show you how to do some of the routine stuff. This is the slide valve, and as you can see, it's very badly marked. This will need reprofiling. Furthermore, the valve is stuck to the valve spindle. To me, this is quite an unusual arrangement. The small cross piece on the valve spindle that moves the valve is normally made from brass. In this case, it's made from steel. And as this piece of steel lives in a very hostile environment in the steam chest of a steam engine, where it's very wet, the piece of steel just goes rusty, and as it goes rusty, it's been grabbing onto the slide valve. So as I've just shown in the video, I used a needle file to enlarge the slot in the slide valve, and then I cleaned up the steel part so it was an easy fit in the gap. Don't forget, it's the steam pressure that holds the slide valve against the port, not the valve spindle. It's easy enough to clean up the port face of the slide valve just by using some wet or dry sandpaper. Work your way down a couple of grades, ending up at 1200 grit, and then use some tea cut on the same level surface that you use for the sandpaper and move it back and forth on here. Finally, move it back and forth on a clean cloth and clean off all the tea cut residue, and the valve looks like this. Very serviceable and far better than it was in the first place. A word now about stud removal do not do it like this. Under no circumstances, put a pair of pliers on the stud. What you need to do is use a couple of lock nuts tightly lock nutted together and then use a spanner and the stud will be removed very easily. I am of course removing the studs because I need to clean up this port face as well. The first thing I'm doing is using a steel rule to get rid of the gasket material. Once all of the gasket material has been removed, I would place the cylinder on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper which in turn is on my metal block and move it back and forth until I get a finish like this. The improved finish on the port face shows a couple of problems. When they've been drilling the ports from the end of the cylinder to the actual block, the drill's wandered about. Not only has it wandered initially probably through the port face and it's been plugged, the second attempt, the drill caught the edge of the port. Having said all that, it's a very smooth repair and the slide valve happily slides over the whole thing. So this is not going to be a problem at all. I really have seen engines that are made far worse than this one. And it poses the same old question, how far does one go with the renovation? Keep watching the series and you'll see how it comes out in the end. This clip shows the underside of the cylinder. Everything looks okay here. This is the exhaust port with a BSP thread in it. I'll need to put a pipe on this because currently it just exhausts into the base. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.